Man, I worked there for two weeks and I quit. Hey, y'all, Sean here with another video. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different because when I say different, it's, it's a little bit different. I actually got a job at Target Distribution Center. And let me tell you, it, yeah, damn, I'm, I mean, the experience there. And this is what I'm here to share with you. Uh, now, I only did it so I could see what, you know, the workplace is looking like because a friend of mine actually got a job there and he was like, man, you know, uh, it's a hard place to work, uh, this and that. And I'm like, it couldn't be that bad. I used to work at Windex Distribution Center back in the day when I was younger and uh, it couldn't be that bad. And he was like, it's bad, man. I'm, I mean, he, he quit really fast. I mean, probably about a week and four days. So uh, it, it was surprising to me that, you know, he quit that fast. So I said, you know what, I haven't, I haven't worked uh, one of these jobs for years. And so it, it, it wouldn't hurt uh, to try it out for a month and come back and give you guys my review on, you know, my experience working there. Before I get started, hey, if you're here for the first time, welcome to my humble home here on YouTube. We talk about side hustles, business, how to make money and make more money. All right, so uh, subscribe to the channel if you're here for the first time. If you're getting value while watching this video, hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to hit that like button, y'all, because let me tell you, that like button will help me get out into the recommendations so more people like you can watch this video also and learn how to make money, all right, and uh, see what's going on out there in the financial field. And if you want to get three free stocks, Sign up with Robinhood. I got the link down there in the description. Robinhood is a place where you can actually buy stocks. And let me tell you, it's very simple and easy to use. I couldn't believe it. When I first signed up with Robinhood, I didn't know it was so easy to invest in stocks and crypto. And if you want to learn how to invest, you've never invested before, you hear people investing in stocks and crypto, and you want to get into it, I'm going to show you uh, the basics on how to get started with Robinhood. So hit the link down below and get three free stocks and start investing. Okay, so let's get started with, you know, uh, working at Target Distribution Center, uh, the process from start to finish uh, to where I'm at right now, telling you about my experience. So one of the things that I did not like uh, was the personality test. Um, I, I didn't like that. I haven't filled out an application in so many years that, you know, for me, I think it took damn near 25 to half an hour to fill it out. But, you know, I got through it and, um, you know, it worked out. One of the things that I noticed with Target, and this is what you guys need to know, they do not do interviews. You go through the hiring process online and uh, you'll just get an email saying, this is when you need to come in for orientation. There's no interviewing process. So you're not going to go there and people are going to ask you, or our manager is going to ask you any question. None of that. All right. It's, there's no interviewing process. Uh, it's just straight to orientation. And that's where you're going to see a whole lot of people. So I went to orientation and um, I noticed that there were a lot of people there. And while we were walking in our group, uh, there was another group down there on the floor and they were taking a look through the warehouse. They were being guided. I thought they were doing a mass hiring, but I'm going to tell you exactly what that was. Now, the orientation, this was one of the most excruciating orientations I've had in my whole life. It was like eight hours long, y'all. I mean, that's a whole work day. It was straight blah, 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 blah. I mean, information overload. People were literally falling asleep in the orientation. I dozed off for a few seconds, a few times. Yes, we took two breaks and at any given point you could get up and, you know, go, you know, go to the restroom and stuff, but it was just excruciating. They talk about all types of stuff in there. COVID, you know, COVID rules and, and, you know, equality and all that stuff. And let me tell you, it's, it's not just that it's just everything overall in this orientation that was, you know, you know, it was just boring and drawn out. And like I said, it, it's not something that I would ever do again. During the orientation, you learn how to uh, cut boxes. They'll teach you how to like pick up pallets and stuff, the right way to pick pallets up. They also show you how to climb these little steps, these little ladder steps, and what to do if an accident happens on the job. We did a walkthrough, but, you know, just walking through the warehouse and seeing how this distribution, you know, system is set up, you know, I was pretty, you know, amazed. I think they got a good system going. 
Uh, but there's one thing I think that they need uh, to be better on. And I'm going to talk about that later in this video. Within the whole orientation, I mean, the whole full eight hours, I don't think they did a good job telling us what the job description was going to be. They didn't do that. Even when we did the walkthrough on the floor, they just showed us around. They didn't say, okay, this is what you're going to do. And this is how it's done. And we're going to watch a few people and see what they're doing. So we went in unprepared mentally. So after orientation, I got an employee number. I got a Z number and a key number. Now the key number is pretty much where you're designated. It could be B1 or B2, which is inbound, outbound. Now when you're hired, you'll get three things. You'll get uh, a jacket, this uh, bright orange jacket out with that. You also get an identification card. I got mine. You also get this plastic bag, this transparent plastic bag. Uh, you cannot wear hoodies in the warehouse. Period. Okay, so I got hired. Now, the first week, you're going to be doing half shifts. So if you're working day shifts, you're going to be working from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. And you're going home. And this is only for one week. It's training week, so you're going to get short days. Now, here's my kickback. I didn't even know that this uh, warehouse was so far out. All right, it's actually, it was one hour away. So I would get up 4.30 in the morning and, you know, start getting ready. And by 5 o'clock, I'm leaving to get there at 6 a.m. And let me tell you, I've never done that before. And I have no intentions of doing it ever again. And that's the reason I got my own business going on. All right. My several businesses that I have going on because I don't want to have to do these types of jobs making somebody else rich. However, everybody has to have a stepping stone or a bridge into what they want to become in life. And this is if this is your stepping stone, do it. If you got to do it, do it. If this is going to be your bread and butter until you figure things out, do it. But in these days, nobody should be planning on working a job like that until they retire. You've got to create a business plan to make sure that some of that time that you're investing, it's going right back in your pockets instead of somebody else that you possibly won't ever meet uh, in a lifetime. Now, here's how it works uh, within the working process. On my first day on the job, everybody was rushing to the time clock. Everybody's trying to make it for six o'clock. Nobody wants to be late. You know, nobody wants to get written up. And it hit me like, mm, I don't miss this type of life. You know, I'm walking fast. I'm taking long strides. You know, I'm tall. So I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of everybody. I'm like, damn, I got to make it. I can't be late you know, the first day on the job. So everybody punched in and uh, before you get started, you got to work out. So you got to do these finger exercises because, you know, lifting boxes and so forth all day long. You know, this thing could give you arthritis. I'm telling you straight up, uh, my fingers were killing me uh, the first two days. So after doing the, the morning exercises, what they'll do is they'll tell you uh, what doors you're designated to. And I say doors because, you know, I was in uh, outbound, so I'm going to be packing. This is where I found out that I'm going to be packing up boxes in uh, the trailer. I didn't know that's what I was going to do, but this is where I started to figuring things out. So when I started doing my doors, they, they, they assigned me to like, you know, three doors. There are slow doors and there are medium doors and then there are fast doors. Now the fast doors are where, you know, the trailers are going to be going uh, to the faster move, the more busier targets. Now as a new hire, they're going to put you on the slower doors uh, so they could train you properly, but uh, you will be advancing to the faster doors uh, within a few weeks, like three to four week, you know, time frame. So I started loading trucks and uh, so there's this conveyor belt uh, that comes, you know, from the outside into the truck, from out in the warehouse, and it extends into the truck. It's called an extendo. Now, there is an average that you got to make daily, and the average is, uh, I think it's like 70 or 80, you know, uh, per hour. Now, if you're on the fast doors, you're going to be around 100 or over per hour. Now, here's the issue that I have. There's no incentives. So if you're doing a, a crazy good job, if you're, if you're hitting like, let's just say 110, 120 uh, per hour, you won't be awarded for that. So I think Target should start considering incentivizing, you know, their employees when they're, you know, meeting the average or, you know, being above the average or whatnot. So let me talk about working a full day. So here's how it works. So you work 10 hour days uh, for four days a week. So you'll get, if you're working the day shift, 
which, you know, I worked the day shift. I was working uh, from uh, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I'm working Tuesdays to Fridays. So I'm working in the warehouse, like I said, break and lunch. Um, one of the things that you cannot do, you can't leave the warehouse. You can't leave the distribution center and go out for lunch. You got to take your lunch with you. So if you're thinking about working there, you want to bring something to eat during your break and for lunch. And after lunch, there are no more breaks, you know, till 4 p.m. you go home. But here are some things that you need to know working at a Target distribution center. It's hard work, y'all. It's very hard work. Um, I mean, you know, just doing the standing all day, it takes a toll on your feet. You're going to go home with your feet hurting. Your feet are going to hurt. So be sure to invest in some good sneakers with good sole inside of it. Back is going to be hurting and your joints are going to be hurting because you're constantly gripping all day. So you're going to feel like you got arthritis in your joints. You're not going to have a lot of time to do a lot of things because you get up um, so early in the morning, you clock in at 6 a.m., you're getting off 4 p.m., your body hurts so bad. You know, by the time you drive home, uh, you just want to go home and rest. Right. So you won't really have much time and you got to go to your bed early at nights. Things that I did notice is that there's a high turnover rate. Be aware of companies with high turnover rates, meaning they're always hiring people like they never stop hiring people. It's always, you know, new hires coming in on a rotation, coming in and people quitting. It's because, you know, uh, those kind of jobs you know, people are not going to stay there for long. Now, when I, while I was working there, I saw probably about 60 people or, you know, 70 people each day, you know, just coming in, they're showing new people, new hires, the warehouse, and they're going through orientation. And it was constant. It was nonstop. So here's how much target distribution pays. Uh, so they have three different shifts. Uh, there's a day shift, the night shift, and the weekend shift. The day shift which was I was on, uh, they paid, they started at $18.50 an hour. Uh, the night shift, you're going to make $1 extra. So you're going to be getting $19.50 per hour. And the weekend shift, you're going to get $21.50 an hour. So the weekend shift, you're going to be working lesser days. Yo, this is modern day slavery. And this is the reason why I do videos like this. So y'all could see that companies are out there literally Pimping people at the bottom. Now, finally, what you got to know is uh, COVID-19. So what happened is um, when, whenever you sign up with the app, you put your number in there, they'll send you text messages on, you know, when there's, you know, when someone has COVID, you know, within the company. So I was getting these continuous alerts, man. I mean, people were catching COVID like crazy in there. And what happens is they'll give you, uh, I think it, it, it started out with two weeks off that they'll give you. And this is paid time off. You know, uh, you know, for you to uh, go ahead and take the COVID test and stay home, but you got to show proof. All right. You got to send them proof that you have COVID and they'll pay you up to two weeks while you're recovering at home. I don't know if people were catching COVID um, <laughs> to get paid while staying home, but there were a lot of new hires that, that took advantage of that. Like um, I heard that these two girls, they got hired and two times, you know, they called in and, you know, they stayed home and got paid pretty much for four weeks. It's just crazy, you know, so people were calling in like crazy saying they got COVID and the alerts were coming to my phone over and over and over and over. Like every day I was getting like two, three alerts. All right. So uh, the COVID rate is it's high. Another thing that I did notice is that there are a lot of white folks in high positions. Uh, you barely saw any black folks in, you know, uh, you know, higher up positions. And I have an issue with that because Target, what they did was went during the, uh, the whole George Floyd situation. I think they were the first company uh, to acknowledge Juneteenth as a national holiday where everybody takes off. As far as racial equality, I didn't really see a lot of that there. And as you know, after, you know, the death of uh, George Floyd, you know, a lot of companies started, you know, you know, putting black people in places and so forth. So they have the token, the one token black person here. A lot of companies are only doing that because it's the popular thing to do. So you'll see a lot of, you know, companies talking about, hey, you know, we hired a black person. Hey, we're all about racial equality over here, but they're not about, you know, racial equality. They're about minimalization and corporate control. Until I see black Latinos and everybody else on equal sides of the playing field, 
that's when I'm going to take y'all serious. And so uh, that's it. That was my um, experience and experiment there uh, because it was an experiment just to see how the work, uh, the workplace is operating and, you know, what's going on there. And um, I'm not looking forward to doing anything like this for the rest of my life. All right. So as far as experimenting, I think I may experiment on on a few driving apps, maybe medical courier service, you know, to give you all a review on what that's like through the process from signing up to, uh, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, delivering on the road and so forth. And uh, thank you for watching as usual, Pocket Value Podcast. God bless. Peace.